Hey, before I get started showing you how to draw the mouths and create them, I want to show you a few different options of different mouth systems that you can do. All right, here's the simplest setup. So you've got a mouth, and if you were to squash and stretch it, it all squashes and stretches because the swaps are drawn on the mouth layer and um, the teeth are included with it. And uh, these are the fastest to create, but um, I, I like them to be a little bit more dynamic so that I can uh, squash and stretch the mouth without the teeth coming with it a lot of the time. Okay, now I'll show you the other extreme. We've got a deformer mouth set up where, check this out, you can move these deformer points around however you want and you can get pretty much anything you could imagine um, from these. I'm gonna shift select those, move it over. Um, so this is extremely customizable and I'll, I'll show you what's going on here. So here's the top lip. There's some green stuff, it's cutter stuff, okay? So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna add a display, control Y, hold alt, and I'm gonna drag it under lips top, and then I'm gonna to switch to showing through that display to show you how it's working. So basically what's happening is, and maybe I'll go ahead and just reset these so they don't look so weird, okay? So what I've done is, uh, and maybe I'll go to the drawing layer and make more sense of it for you. On the line art, I've got the upper lip. On the color art, uh, I usually nowadays I'd put it on the underlay. But on a different sub layer is where I put this cutter kind of stuff. Um, let me show you in the camera view. Um, the bottom lips, okay? So the bottom lips, they have the same kind of thing going on to where um, on the line art, they've got this, and then on the color art or underlay, they have a a cutter kind of thing going on and then what you do is you say wherever those things meet together here let me show you in the camera view so where that green and that green meet together so it's a an inverted cutter where they meet up then that is what is going to show all of the inner mouth stuff so here's all the inner mouth stuff and we've got a reveal that just shows all that green. So it's a, a more advanced setup, but that's kind of the concept of how to set up a complete deformer mouth. And they're very dynamic, but my favorite mouth system is this kind that I built from my, my little Matt character here. And uh, what I love about this setup is I will set some deformers. I'm going to press the bracket keys to go through the different swaps that I have. I have deformers that are on the wide open mouth, the starting to open mouth, and on the closed mouth. So I can deform those to get pretty much whatever I want, but most of the time when you're doing lip sync, you want to just quickly get to the shapes that you need. And you can do almost all the lip sync that you need to do with just these swaps right here, just opening and closing. And so I'll scrub through the timeline and I'll open it a little bit more. I'll scrub through the timeline, I'll close it a little bit more. So it makes it really fast. So for me personally, um, I find that using this kind of hybrid system where it swaps and a few of them have um, deformers on them, um, this is the easiest to use for, for the productions that I like to do. Let me just give you an idea. I'm gonna go full screen here. This is how many deformer swaps that I have. So that's the closed mouth starting to open wide. And then maybe this is the sad closed starting to open wide. And then the neutral closed starting to open wide. And then there's gonna be three for the quarter front mouth and then three for the quarter front sad and three for the quarter front neutral. That's kind of how I do it. So, all right, now let's get into how to actually draw them, okay? Hello, it is time to work on the mouths. Now, let me just give you a quick overview. I usually make a separate set of mouths for the front and another set of mouths for the quarter front and another for the profile. And the profile usually cuts through the face. Um, so in this video, we're just gonna work on the, the front view. All right, so here I am in Harmony. I've got the image imported and I'm gonna go find the reference image down here. 
Okay. So it's that one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press zero on my timeline to collapse everything. I'm going to copy this front facing potato. And I'm going to untween that and extend this out. And a lot of the time what I like to do is I, I will make a separate spot on my timeline for the mouths. So I'm actually going to move this down here to frame one, 100. And I'm going to insert a scene marker, create scene marker. Uh, I usually go for white with the mouths because usually I think of teeth. Um, so I'm just going to say these are the mouths. And I'm just going to make it like 150 frames. It's uh, typical for what I, how I usually handle mouths. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is make sure that I can see these expressions. And this is locked right now. I need to unlock it. Okay, I'm going to take this. I'm just going to press copy. Copy. I'm using animate current frame, not the red, the yellow running guy. Paste that here. I'm going to press F5. It says, how long would you like this to be up for? I want it to be up till frame uh, maybe 250. So now it'll stay up the whole time. I also need to do the same thing with my potato. I need to press F5 and stay up till 250. All right, so now I have that. Next up, I want to size this to the right size. Now, I just want to remind you that the reason that I can see this through this transparent um, image is because the image has this setting advanced and I changed the opacity to 50. All right, so I want to first start out with this uh, happy mouth. So I'm gonna find a corner. So I just found the corner of the face and it's matching the reference there. I'm gonna zoom out and I'm using the, the transform tool with the animate current frame. I'm gonna move the temporary pivot position. Then I'm gonna hold control shift and middle mouse, which will scale it up from that point in respect to that point. All right, so it looks like the face isn't exactly the same. Let me just match up the eyeballs. And let's just pick a spot and then size it up. Control shift, middle mouse. And I think that is pretty good. And now what I will do is, so that's gonna be the wide open mouth. And I want to show you how I like to do the mouth. Here are the important, I'd say these are the key positions of the mouth. You're gonna have closed, uh, the position where you just see the top teeth, the wide open mouth, and then an F mouth. And sometimes you'll, you also will have an O and an O. Those are all very common. Um, every once in a while, I'll make an E mouth where the mouth goes a little wider, and, and sometimes there's other mouths. Um, so I'll take you through the process on how to fill this out, but that wide open mouth is gonna be number six. So I'm going to move this keyframe that's showing the reference, and I'm gonna move it to frame 106. All right. Now with the sad mouth, let's let's start the sad sequence. So the sad sequence, let's start it at 120. I'll insert a keyframe. I'll insert a keyframe here just so I know that's where things are starting. I'm gonna go to 126. I'm gonna hold shift and middle mouse to drag this over. Well, looks like it wasn't lined up perfectly, but that's fine. I can line it up. And I'm gonna use my forward and backward uh, keyframe to just see if it's staying in about the right place. Looks like it needs to come this way a little bit. There, now it looks like it's staying perfect. All right, so I've got that. Now let's move to this one. So that is the just the closed mouth frown, and that is gonna be 121. So I'm actually gonna copy this keyframe Paste it here, just control C, control V, hold shift, slide this over. 
move it up a little, go back and forth, just try to get it to be in the same place. There, that's looking pretty good. That's a big frown compared to the cute little smile. All right, and then I've got the ooh. Now the ooh is usually a reusable one that I can use on multiple things. So this is gonna be position six, um, and then seven is gonna be the R. That's when the mouth is just starting to close. We'll worry about that in a second. And then eight would be the O, and nine is gonna be the ooh, okay? So I'm going to move this here. And a lot of the time, a happy ooh and a sad ooh will look exactly the same. So let me just get this in the right place. That's looking good. And then I'm going to copy this ooh over to here. Okay, so the sad is going to have the same ooh. I don't, I'm not worrying about the eyebrows or anything right now. I'm just looking at the mouths. All right, it's time to show you how I like to make mouths. I'm going to lock this layer so that I can click on the rig. I'm going to click on the mouth, go find that center on selection. And I'm going to name the current mouth that I have here. I think I'm going to name it, uh, let's see, I'm going to rename Control D. And this is going to be FR, meaning front, underscore H for happy. And then I'm going to go zero zero. So zero zero stands for um, the pursed mouth. So like one is the closed happy, and then the zero zero is closed happy, but it is um, pinched together a little bit more. This would be for making the p, the p, or yeah, mostly just that, <laughs> or m mm, with a little m. All right, so I am going to make mouth number one. I am going to create an empty drawing. I'm gonna turn on my onion skin, Alt-O, so I can see the previous one. Let's go ahead and rename this. Instead of it being one, I'm gonna call it FR underscore H01. It's nice to have these organized so that they line up and they swap in a nice order. Now, I'm thinking, how wide does this happy mouth need to be? It probably needs to be the same width as the sad mouth, I would think. So I'm going to figure out um, where that sad mouth is going to be. Okay, there. So that's pretty big, huh? So I'm just going to try to draw a happy mouth here. Okay, I'm using 15. Oops. Let me go and find the right color. So, let me see. I'm going to put this drawing here so I can swap back and forth. Okay, D, dropper tool. Okay, so that's potato dark. And then here, where's the sad mouth? I'm just going to move that forward. So now I can go forward and backward a drawing with shortcut keys. Let's see. I'm just gonna delete that. All right. There we go. Okay, so sad mouth. I might as well just make the sad mouth right now. Sorry, I'm, I'm jumping around here. So make an empty drawing. Control D, and I'll say FR underscore S01. So this is gonna be a sad closed mouth. All right, I've got my pencil tool, and it's got my tapering, because I really like to add tapers on the lines for the mouth. I'm gonna get my contour tool, Alt-Q, uh, select tool, select both of these, Alt-J to join them, or click on the little merge pencil lines button. Okay, so now I've got happy and sad, now I can try to figure out where the, the happy mouth should be. So I'm going to access front happy one. 
and then I am going to go to my onion skin and show the next stuff. This is the onion skin view. This is new in Harmony 20. All right, so here I am. Let me just figure something out. I'm going to try to go wider. Contour editor. And let's see if this is going to work. Alt O, turn things off, and then swap. Wow, that's really tiny, isn't it? But it's cute, it's nice. Um, but between those two, I think that that's working pretty well. I think I'll tighten it up just a little bit more and use my width, Alt W. That's the shortcut I use for the pencil editor tool. I'm going to select those points, zoom in with two, delete, hold shift as I pull both of those together, straighten that out a little bit just so that the pinch is a little bit more consistent on both sides. All right, so forward and backward drawing between those. I think that's looking pretty, it's looking fairly reasonable. This might need to come left, come more towards the center. Okay, I think I like that. Uh, maybe I should move it up a little bit though. Yeah, so that's not such a big difference between those two. All right, I think it looks cute. So once I have the number one mouth, the next mouth that I'm gonna make is the wide open mouth. So that's gonna be number six. So I'm gonna go to frame 106 and I am going to create an empty drawing. And now I'm going to trace the reference image. And it looks really grainy and gross. Remember how we um, make that look better. We click on the drawing layer and then we choose um, bitmap image quality, which is control Q. And then we pump that up. And it should look a lot better now. All right, I, I, most of the time I like to do it this way. I'll turn on the light bulb, draw on top. That way it's very clear for me I'm pressing and holding Control Alt and I'm dragging because I want to draw with the natural arc of my wrist. Select those, join them, Alt J. That's the shortcut I chose for merge pencil lines. Probably want to join. Do I want to join these? There could be a reason for leaving them separate. I think I will leave them separate. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to pull that up here past this. I'm going to press K so I can see my strokes. And I'm going to hold Alt and drag that down here. Okay, it's crossing that point. Pull this up. I just want to overshoot it. You'll see why in a second. Hold Alt, pull that handlebar out. Okay. Adjust this. Okay, now I'm going to use my cutter tool, and it's set to bevel. So mouse gesture cutter, I just snip it off right there. I'm going to use Alt W. I'm going to smooth this out. You just pull the pull the line out of the end of it. There was a straight line there. I'll show it to you here. Also, just pull it out. Okay. Now it's going to be nice because I'm just going to be able to um, squash and stretch it as I'm making the other mouths. All right, so I have established the outer lines of the mouth. Now I am going to define the tongue. So do I have a color for the tongue? No, I don't. So I'm going to make one. And I am going to do this. Trim that, trim that with the cutter tool. Alt W for the pencil editor. Pull this out the end. Pull this out the end. Okay. All right, let's see. Contour editor. 
I just want to make a nice little cute tongue. And I want it to be generic enough that I'll be able to use it in multiple places. I will want to be able to flip it upside down to have this kind of a tongue. So I think that's working pretty nice right now. All right, so the other thing to do um, is show you how the mouth is going to work. Right now, if I were to, I'm going to press Shift to X to reset the view. If I were to use the animation tools, transform tool and animate current frame, if I were to squash and stretch, you'll see that the tongue squashes and stretches with the mouth. That is not ideal. That looks like a computer definitely made that. We want it to be separate. So let me show you how I like to do that. All right, now we haven't drawn anything on the tongue layer. And I'm going to make another layer called mouth sync. I'm going to press Control R. That's to add a drawing. I call this mouth underscore sync. I like it to be capital in case I need to find it really quick. I'm going to put a backdrop around it by pressing insert. That's the shortcut that I like for that. I'll just title it up here so I can quickly tell what's going on. This does not need to be connected to anything, but um, when we go and group something, if uh, there's ports that are missing a cable, uh, sometimes the group sends out some mystery cables. So I'm just going to connect it even though it doesn't need to be connected. All right, so here we are. Um, I want to sync this to that, meaning whenever this thing swaps, no, whenever any of these three swap, the tongue, the mouth, or the mouth sync, they all swap at the same time. And this is a, a way that you can make a hand, um, a hand drawing, where if you wanted to have like 10 different layers and they all swap at the same time for a hand, you could separate it out to 10 different pieces. But I don't often do that. All right, so here we are. I am going to press save, and I'm going to name this mouth really quick before I forget. So this is going to be control D. I'm going to call it front underscore happy zero six. This is the wide open mouth. All right. Now I want to sync this to that. The reason I want to do that instead of just syncing them to each other is sometimes you will want to unsync them and uh, you kind of need an extra dummy one that you can delete in order to nicely unsync them. So that's why we're making this. I am going to do something that I like to do. I'm going to right click and choose tag, timeline tag. And I'm going to switch to view tagged layers here in my timeline. That's down here in this area. All right, what I'm going to do now is I am going to select these drawings and press Control C to copy them. And I'm going to come down to mouth sync and press paste, Control V. And then I am going to go through all of those drawings and delete the art. So go to the next drawing, next drawing, next drawing, next drawing. Interesting. I don't have them all swapping on right now. Oh, yes I do. I guess I drew them on a different layer. Oh, yeah. It's further down. Delete. Delete. All right, so these are all blank, but they're all showing up at the same time as the mouth. And that is important. Uh, let me show you why. I am going to now select the tongue and the mouth layers, and I'm going to come to this menu and say nodes, sync layer width. I'm going to choose mouth sync, so I can type mouth. This is nice in Harmony 20. We got a search box. All right, so now all three of those will swap at the same time. So if I'm pressing my bracket keys here in the timeline, you will see they all swap at the same time. Or I could swap through here in the drawing substitution window. 
Um, there's a few things to indicate that they're, they're linked, synced. You've got this little chain. You also have this red highlight on all three of them. You also have these two little black boxes on any of those nodes when you select them. I'm going to press save. Okay. So now we're ready to move forward. Now, why did I make the mouth sync layer and why did I copy stuff and then delete the stuff from it? The reason for that is I already had the main mouth um, showing the swaps when I wanted it to. If I would have selected this and synced it to the the mouth sync layer before it had any swaps on it, it would now make the mouth layer all the blank swap. Like it, it wouldn't show the mouth swaps when I want it to be. Maybe I should show you a better example of that. I'll just do it, do it really fast. Okay, test and test sync. I just want to make sure that you understand synced layers because they can be really helpful. Control H, add a composite, delete the composite. I'm just going to choose selection only mode. On test, I'll go ahead and just make a blank, draw, a new drawing. I'll just make a little mark, 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 mark. Okay. So now we're pretty much to the same situation we were with the mouth, right? So what if I went ahead and I and I said I want to sync this with the test sync? Watch what happens. Boom. It removed all those swaps. The swaps are still available. I still can get to them, but it just uh, mimicked what was on the other test layer. So I just think it's better to make sure that both of them are have the same number of swaps before you're ready to go. But now either of them have uh, the same number of swaps, even though there's no art on the test sync layer. I'm going to delete those. I'm going to switch back to view tagged layers. All right, so there's the mouth opening. Now, I like to make smooth sequences, so this one is not smooth at the moment. I'm gonna press Alt-O, and I kind of, I need to plug this mouth in so it's in front of the eyes. That's the way that uh, they want to make this mouth work. So between this cute little mouth to this sideways open happy mouth, it looks like uh, I'm gonna need to start going sideways. I'm just thinking, how am I gonna kind of make it even uh, nicely go from this to that? Okay, I'm starting to think that I, I want to have this at an angle to start off with. Now Alt-O, get a drawing tool, a select tool. Okay, so now I need to line that up. Oops. I'm just looking at the corners here. I want this mouth to, the corners of the mouth to move in an arc as they go from place to place. So here maybe I will lower this just a little bit more turn off the onion skin okay maybe this is gonna come up a little bit okay so now I've got this um, t working in a nice sequence that it would open like that 
And now it is time to put the tongue where it belongs. So I'm going to take the tongue using the select tool. I'm going to go center on selection and I'm going to paste the tongue here and I'm going to paint bucket it, paint unpainted, alt Y. And I've got this tongue and that is drawing number six. So the next key drawing that I want you to do is we've done one, we've done six. The next one would be this number two mouth where the mouth is just opened a little bit. Now, since this character doesn't have any teeth, I'm just gonna have to guess how that would work. Okay, so I'm gonna go to frame 102 and I'm actually going to copy the front happy six mouth to here and I'm gonna duplicate it and here's the duplicate button and so duplicate drawing what that does is it copies the art and it makes it available in a new swap let's go ahead and name it what we want it to be named while we're thinking about it control D FR H 02 all right so now I'm gonna turn on the onion skin I need to make this close to this uh, closed mouth shape and bring this up here because it's just barely going to start opening okay turn off the onion skin try it out and see if that's looking okay Yeah, so just like classic Disney animators, a lot of them, yes, they'd use their light table sometimes, but then they turn it off to see how it's really working. Okay, that's looking like a pretty smooth sequence. All right, next up, let's, uh, let's see. So when we duplicated, it even brought the tongue with it. So it duplicated all three of the swaps. So it duplicated the tongue swap, the mouth swap, and the mouth sink swap. The mouth sink swap is empty. Now let's uh, figure out the next in-between that we need. So we have mouth two, we've got mouth six. So now we wanna go for mouth four, okay? So I'm just gonna duplicate. I'm gonna go to frame 104 I'm going to duplicate the front happy two. I'm gonna rename it while I'm thinking about it. Control D, front underscore happy 04. Okay, now I am going to come to the drawing view and press Alt O so I can see the onion skin. I am going to come here and just move it to the dead center. So this shouldn't take a lot of thought, this is just totally dead in between both of those number two and number six mouth shapes. You really want these to be smooth sequences. Okay, turn off the onion skin, see if that's working okay. Yep, that's looking pretty good to me. And notice again that the tongue got duplicated with it. And I just, I usually leave the tongue where it is. Maybe I will go ahead and, yeah, I usually leave it where it is. All right, next up, let's duplicate the number two mouth, but on frame 103. So duplicate, control D. FRH03. Um, Looks like it got confused. Let's uh, do that again. FRH03. All right. Now I'm going to turn on the onion skin, Alt O, and it's going to be right between these. Just 
just get it as perfect as you can in between those two mouth shapes. Alt O. Looks like the top of the mouth needs to come up just a little. That's looking more smooth. Okay, great. There's only one more to go for this sequence. I am going to copy number six and paste it here. Now notice this, we've got front happy six here and front happy six here, but there's a line in between them. That is an exposure line. So watch, if I were to shift select both of these and choose remove duplicate key exposure, it would get rid of it. But I actually don't want to get rid of it because I want to duplicate this thing and I don't want it to duplicate all the way down the timeline. I just want to duplicate the single frame. So I'm going to press duplicate. I'm going to rename the drawing. FR H05. Turn on the onion skin, Alt O. Bring these together. You can favor the more open position. Maybe I'll show you how I do that sometimes. If you just keep the position just a little bit more towards the wide open mouth instead of dead in between. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. I most often just put it in the dead center, but I want to show you the options that you have. Okay. I'm going to press Alt O, forward and back. Yeah, I think I want to bring this down a little. Put another point by pressing Control, move it up a little bit. And now I've got this nice, smooth opening sequence. The thing that you don't want to happen and that I've seen on some mouth sequences is the mouth will be opening but in the middle it'll be going out to the side and jittering around and all that stuff. You just want these nice smooth sequences and um, that will help you uh, make the lip sync look a lot better. Alright, next up we need the inside of the mouth. I think. Uh, I need to make a swatch for that because I bet you I'm just going to use black. So I'm just going to take a swatch that already looks black and press plus and I'm going to call this um, mouth. Alright so here I am on 102. I'm going to go to the color art layer. I'm going to press this button, uh, create color art from line art. So it just generated some stroke lines for me. Well, let me just show you. I'll press undo. So on the line art, there's this. On the color art, there's nothing. But then if I click on this, it generates it for me. And then I've got my paint unpainted bucket. And I'm using the mouth color. I'll put it here. Go to the next. Press that button. Paint. Next frame. Button. Paint. So now I've got the mouth doing that. I do think that looks a little weird with it over his eyeball, but that's the style. All right, now let's take care of this tongue, okay? I'm gonna turn off the reference, just press D to disable it so that I can see what's going on a little bit easier. Okay, for the tongue, I am going to do some engineering. So I'm going to go find my layers here, my abbreviated layers. I'm just going to put these over. I'm going to cut those and paste them in the reference area. I think that's a better place for them anyway. All right, so with the mouth, I'm going to want the lines and the color art. So lines and color, copy that, paste it down here. I'm going to add the prefix mouth underscore. Alt slide this into that cable, plug this cable in, and then I'm going to plug the color art in behind the tongue. Okay. 
Now what I need to do is I need to make it so that tongue is only going to show up inside the mouth. So I'm going to get the little inverted cutter, the reveal, put it here, hold alt to drag it in, and I am going to name it tongue reveal. And then to make it reveal, I'm going to plug the color art in. So there we go. That red is pretty bright. I think I'll just play with it really quick. Don't click that. Maybe I'll make it a little bit more yellow. Just going closer to the brown color a little bit. I think it should still be bright. I usually find it easiest to do color sampling and color adjustments in Photoshop, and then I just, uh, or I play with the colors, the hue saturation in Photoshop, and then I'll paint drop to get the color. Okay, that is the first main sequence and you can do most of any lip sync you need with that sequence. But now we're gonna go to the rest. Let's go back to the node view, turn on our reference, enable it. Where's the ooh, there's the ooh, all right. So with this one, I do not need a tongue in the ooh, and I usually don't need teeth in the ooh either. Uh, let me just tell you, if I were doing a character that had teeth, I would set the thing up the exact same way, except there would be teeth up and teeth down, and they would also be synced. Now, the advantage of having this tongue separate is I can move it independent of the mouth, and I can even squash and stretch this, and the tongue doesn't get squashed and stretched. So that's fantastic especially if you want to add some teeth. Um, they won't be moving at the same time as squashing and stretching the mouth unless you wanted it to be that way by parenting up. Then you could squash and stretch it like that, but you don't want to. All right, so I am going to create an empty drawing. I am going to draw the ooh. Might as well use my uh, ellipse, alt equal. get rid of that. It was an autofill. I didn't mean to do that. And then I'm going to choose the potato dark line. Maybe I'll skew it just a little. And then he needs this lower lip. Oops. D paint drop sample. Got my dropper and I sampled. All right. Let me just get this looking all right. Maybe I do want to add a little bit more taping, tapering. Alt W, get my pencil width editor, my pencil editor tool. Okay. Great. Oh, I drew it on the color art layer. Um, I'm just gonna go Alt Y to paint unpainted and choose the mouth. And I'm going to shift select the brown lines, cut them, paste them on the line art. All right, so now I've got the ooh. Now I want to make an O. So I'm gonna to go to frame 107, 108. I'm gonna say create empty drawing. And then I'm gonna to go to, I'm gonna to go to the drawing view. It'll be easier to see there. I'm gonna press Alt O. And I think I'll go here and copy this uh, O shape. Um, with the select tool. And now here I am on the O mouth. And I'm just gonna try to make something that would make sense. With the O mouth, I'm usually just trying to make a, a wider O a lot of the time. And it's quite uh, often that I see this in cartoons, they'll kind of cheat the O and the O, that even if normally you would see some teeth in there or the tongue, 
they leave them out. So it's just a, you see the back of the mouth for the O and the U. Sometimes I do leave the teeth in for the O, but I never leave them in for the U. All right, so let's see how this is looking on the character. Does that look like a good O? Yeah, I think that's a good spot for it. So now I'm gonna paint bucket that with the mouth color. Cut that, paste it in the color art layer. Okay, turn off the onion skin, Alt O. That's looking nice. Um, I can't help but think I might not want the mouth cutting the eyeball like that, but I'll go ahead and leave it like this for now. All right, so that's the O. I need to name that. I also need to name the O. So I'm gonna rename Control D, F R H O nine, and then this one's gonna be. FRH08. Now this one, swap number seven, is going to be the R mouth. And if you look at yourself when you say R, it's it's starting to go towards an O. So R. So the mouth is starting to go that way. So I'm just gonna go to my drawing view, and this time I'm gonna show a mouth. Let's see. Even though on frame 106 it's the six mouth. I think I might choose something a little smaller. I'm gonna choose five. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna copy this and paste it here. So I've got five, five, and then I'm gonna duplicate it. And I'm gonna say fr underscore h07. This is gonna be the R mouth. And sometimes what I'll do, I'll rename this again. Sometimes I'll put a little letter after it to remind people what this is for. So I could put O and then ooh. I don't bother naming any of these aside from just one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just white opening wider. All right, so here's the R. I'm gonna turn on the onion skin, Alt O, okay? So just moving something between this medium open mouth to the O. What am I gonna do to get that? I'll bring this in a little bit. Bring this here. I think I kind of like that. It's sticking out a little bit. Okay. Turn off the onion skin. Now, I kind of do want to get rid of this duplicate key exposure. When you're going back and forth between drawing swaps, it gets a little funny when there's a duplicate. So I'm gonna press get rid of the duplicate. Just got rid of that line. So now I go forward and back when, and I can see how it's working. There are ways of marking drawings and, and just seeing the ones that you want to see, but I'm not gonna go into that right now. You could Google it or look on the Harmony website. The help. want to have a nice smooth sequence. R, R, R. Okay, let's see how that looks. So I'm going to paint bucket it. Mouth color. Ooh, that was... Do that again. Hmm, I kind of want it to go further. I'm going to get the um, contour editor. Hold control, add a point drag it out, hold a point, drag it out. There was some closed gap stuff going. It just didn't go all the way to the edge. Cut that, paste it here, get rid of the other stuff that had been here before. All right, so here I am. And that, that looks like a cute little R mouth to me, I think. All right, and then I need my six swap to come back here. So I've got my sequence. All right, that's the sequence. There are two more mouths that sometimes, 
well, I always include the F mouth, uh, so let's work on that one next. Now with F, I'm usually going to use something to start off with, so it's going to be close to this mouth probably. Yeah, so mouth two or mouth three, I'm going to copy this, paste it right after nine, so on 10, and I'm going to paste it again on 11. I'm going to duplicate on frame 111. And uh, let's see, I think I'm actually just going to delete the art that's here. I guess I didn't need to, del to uh, duplicate. I'm going to sketch this. I want to see, it, it takes me some practice to get the F mouths to look right. So I'm going to turn off the potato expression stuff so it's easier to see what's happening. Okay, I'm going to go to the line art layer. Or maybe I'll show the eyeball so I can see everything. Okay, so looking at that, I'm going to look in my mirror. Okay, so the edges of my mouth need to come in. Top lip's going to go up a little, and the bottom lip is going to cave in. So. I'm going to use my brush tool. You heard me right. I'm using my brush, not the pencil, because I just want to sketch this. And I'm going to use my sketch color. Press Alt O. All right, so F. I'm going to press K so I'm not seeing those strokes. OK, so the mouth coming in. Usually we do something like this where the there's an indication that it's kind of caving into the mouth. But this poor little guy doesn't have any teeth, so I don't know what this is even going to look like. Oh, you know what? Maybe what we do is we actually close the mouth and you can just see like a little bit of black coming through the edge. Maybe that's how this is going to need to work. Maybe. There's a couple little lines to indicate what's happening there. All right, let's 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 see how this looks. Alt-O. Mm, I think it needs to be a little bit more centered. Uh, it's kind of just playing around. Maybe my F can be the same for the happy and sad. That might work. What if we make it look like it's overlapping a little bit? I wonder if that'll help it. that and make that happen. I'm going to cut it, paste on the underlay, make sure this eyeball is visible so I can see that lower layer. I'm going to use my potato dark line and I'm going to draw and now I'm going to do this. I'm going to overshoot it on purpose. And I'm going to trim it, use the cutter tool. And I'm going to use the pencil tool again. Pencil tool again. And now I'm going to paint bucket. And I'm going to paint bucket the inside of the mouth color. Oh, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to press K. Oh, I can see an, a disconnected line. I'm going to press V, which gets my stroke tool out. And it's just an invisible stroke. V. Now I can paint bucket that without it having the issues. Okay, finally I'm going to do these little crease lines. And maybe it should touch. Usually it does. Okay. Contour editor. Go to the underlay, select all that stuff, delete it. Okay, 
So now we just need to see if that looks okay or not. <laughs> that looks weird. Okay. Let's see. I've got it all on the line art right now. I'm going to turn off the light bulb. I'm going to turn off the strokes. Okay. And I'm just going to select it and move it around a little. That looks really weird. Sometimes you kind of just need to see, you need to test it um, with some dialogue to see if it's going to work. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell without having some dialogue to use. But I think I'm just going to leave it there for now. and call it the F mouth. So I no longer need this one that was kind of small, the number two. I'm going to move this F mouth back up over top it. So I've got the OO. And then the next thing I'm going to have is going to be the F. So this is going to be front, happy, 10, F. OK. Man, I don't think I like that. I might even want to put teeth in there just to make it not look so weird. Um, it would just take playing with it though. I'll leave it like that for now. All right, the last mouth that I occasionally include is the E mouth. And let me just show you how I usually get that. I'll choose like the middle mouth, so four. I'm going to copy 4, I'm going to paste it on 11 and on 12, and now I'm going to duplicate 12. I'll go ahead and name it while I'm thinking about it, so it'll come after 10, so this will be front happy 11 E. So with an E mouth, you usually go E, your, your mouth is going to come out wider, and your teeth, uh, the bottom teeth, usually come up, and then it's E, that's what it looks like. So I'm going to turn on my onion skin, Alt-O. Um, I don't want to see everything, I just want to see the line art layer at the moment. He's like saying cheese. It's kind of disturbing though, isn't it? Because he's a potato and we decorate them with cheese before we eat them. <laughs> All right. E. And uh, maybe since he doesn't have any teeth, maybe I'll move up the tongue. But while I'm here, I want to paint bucket the inside of his mouth. Cut that. Delete. Paste from the color art. And then with the tongue, I think on this tongue, I will go ahead and actually move the thing up. So that's on the line art layer, control A, select all, E, 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 E. All right, so maybe the tongue can even rotate in a little bit. E, E. E, e. And now let's see what it looks like. E, E, E. Maybe that's coming up too much. I'll leave it down. E, E. Transform tool. E, 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 E. Yeah, I think that, that looks pretty good. Um, I know a lot of other people like to make an L mouth. Now look how quick it can be if we want to make that. I'm just going to um, go find mouth number four. Now, I don't need four sitting there anymore. I just I usually like to have a before and after that I can compare them together, see how they're working. I'm going to copy four. I'm going to drag 11 backwards, so it's now on top of where four used to be. I'm going to paste four here after 11. And I am going to duplicate this going to rename it, Control-D, front, 
happy um, 12 uh, L. And I'll make it a capital L so I can tell it's an L and it doesn't look like a one. All right, now all I do here is I just select the tongue, flip it, bring it up. And I think that actually looks pretty good. Let me just bring it down a little. Uh, that is another special mouth. Sometimes when people do teeth, they'll make a the, you know, and the tongue overlaps the teeth just a tiny bit. So the top teeth usually. But I think this will work just fine. All right, so now we've got the entire mouth sequence. And let me show you how cool this is, what we can do with it. Um, let's make sure that the pivot point is in a good spot. So I'm going to get out of this view uh, tagged layer. So I'm going to go to normal view mode and press oh, um, center on selection. I want to make sure that this pivot point is in a place that makes sense. I think I'm going to bring it down a little bit more um, for everything. So select all three, well, even the drawing layer, right? And press the rotate tool, advanced animation rotate tool, bring it down. And yeah, it's a pretty good place for it to pivot from. Now we can squash and stretch it on the parent layer, but more importantly, we can squash and stretch it on the regular mouth layer. And the last thing that I want to do is um, I like to add a few deformers to some of the drawings, not all of them. The first one that I like to add it to is the closed mouth. So I'm going to go to H01 and um, oh, I am kind of thinking that I might end up coming back through here making a happy mouth that doesn't cut over the eye. So I think I will go ahead and rename all of these drawings so that I have room to do something like that. So I'm gonna go to the X sheet. The X sheet is great because you can see all the swap names right away and instead of doing happy I am going to do HT for happy tilt I just I want them to sort together so I'm just gonna press control D to rename and do HT All right, now I have all of those named with HT for happy tilt. Um, maybe I won't make the other mouths, but I just wanted to prepare ahead of time. Okay, the next thing I want to do is add a few deformers to this mouth in case I need them. I am going to go to drawing one. And this is kind of cool. In the X sheet, you can see where things are synced. They're all synced to the mouth sync layer. The titles of the layers are up here at the very top. All right, I'm gonna go back to the timeline. I'm gonna click on the rigging tool. I'm gonna to click plus. Please make sure you press plus to avoid problems. I'm gonna go and use the envelope mode and I am going to make a two point deformer for this mouth. Drag from there, drag from there. I can test it out, Control, uh, Shift T, Transform Tool, this can be great, I can get whatever I want from it, it can be very fun. Press Undo, Undo. Okay, now let's go to this. I often like to give um, this mouth some deformers. So click on the rigging tool and click plus. I'm just going to make it really simple here, just like a three-point deformer. Hold Control, right? No, Alt. To break that to a corner. Okay. 
Again, let's see if we can do that rule of thirds thing that I like to do. Okay, now um, Shift T, transform tool. Let's see if we can move that around and get what we want. Yeah, we can do some really great stuff there. Press undo, undo. Now let's go add some deformers to the wide open mouth. So number six, rigging tool plus same kind of thing. We're gonna stay simple. Uh, sometimes when I'm rigging a mouth that's more human and less cutesy, I will put a center point here and here so that the mouth can do like a, uh, here, let me just show you. So it can kind of do like a, this kind of thing. But I don't think that that's needed for this character. Okay. So the next point is going to be there. Then I'm just going to bring it back. Hold Alt to break that handlebar. Do my rule of thirds. Move this up. Okay, there we go. Let's test it out, transform tool. See, this is what happens when it starts pinching too close to the other deformers, it starts to get broken. That is why I gave it a separate set of uh, smaller deformers that are already pinched to avoid that issue. Um, sometimes if you go to the render view, it won't show that breaking apart stuff, but Eh, that's I've just gotten in the habit of making those three sets of deformers for the lips. So I put it on swap one, two, and six. And uh, now I'm just going to select this and, and press reset deformers so it goes back to how I set it. I want to show you what's going on in here, and we did this already with the, um, the arm, I think. But I just want to show you what's happening here in the deformer group. So I've got three deformation chains. If I were to go into these, you'd see an offset and a curve. That's what these things are made out of. This is the offset point, and this is a curve point. All right, I'm gonna open up the layer properties here. Now you can see I already have these named the correct thing. Number one, number two, number six, okay? Those are the drawings that it knows that those swaps and the, the deformation chains belong together. So I want to rename these groups so they make a little bit more sense. I'm going to rename this group. This is number one, fr underscore ht01. Now again, if I open up the transformation switch, you'll see the transformation chains are not named intelligibly. They're just one, two, three. I do want to name them. So I think if I click on the transformation switch in the deformer toolbar, this little rename transformation with the A lights up so it's available for us to use. And then I'm just gonna name these so that they all match. Front, happy T. And then once I open this up, you'll see all of them match. I, I like to name them in all three places. The First, the cell swap before I start putting deformers on, then the groups of the deformers, and then the transformation chain names. There's something I wanna show you. I think I'll just make a quick other little video about it, um, about associating transformation switches, or associating transformation chains. Um, but that is the process for doing the mouths. And then I would do a sad mouth, maybe a neutral mouth, and then I would make these sequences also for the quarter front mouth and then the profile mouth. 
and I will include those and it'll just be really speedy. It's a complete repeat of the same steps that we took here. One thing that I would tell you to, to be thoughtful of is your wide happy mouth should be about the same width as your wide sad mouth and the closed happy mouth should be the same width as the closed sad mouth. Just uh, compare between those two to make sure it's staying a reasonable size. So. All right, thanks. See ya. See you soon.